Hey everyone, Maury Curtis Dunbar here. Welcome back to Painted Studio. It is a gorgeous Thursday afternoon out. It's sunny, a little chilly. So I've got to, give me just a second here to move my cameras around so that I can see when you're asking questions and I can turn the volume off and not hear myself on echo because I'm not that interesting. Um, and now I can see everything that's going on. All right, so yesterday we were working on this chandelier, and we're going to continue working on it today, but I did get a request um, yesterday about color theory. Color theory is literally the study of color and how it interacts with itself. I am sure you all have seen a basic color wheel. These are the... Pri Ignore whatever this says. This is some crazy marketing thing in here, but I can't find all my studio color wheels, so I printed one off the internet just so you could see the basics. So these are the primary colors here, red, yellow, and blue. The secondary colors are what you get when you mix two of the primary colors. So clearly, blue and yellow make green, red and yellow make orange, red and blue make purple. And so when somebody says, what's a complementary color? It's one of these second ring colors, like purple, and the opposite color that it was not made from. So purple is made from red and blue here. The complementary co color to it is yellow because that is the one color that is not mixed into it. So the complementary color of green is red, very Christmassy. The complementary color of blue is orange. And then you get into what are called the tertiary colors, which are combinations, shades, highlights, and various depth blendings of where, where you get here. So this one's a little more blue. This is a kind of blue. This gets more red. This gets even redder. Same thing here. So color wheels help you work out what colors look well together. And then there's a whole theory of shades and tints, meaning whether there's been white or black added to them. I'm going to share with you one of my favorite books. My son gave this to me years ago because I begged him for it. This is called The Color Mixing Bible. Okay, It's not just color theory, which you get at the very beginning. You get color wheels and all of that stuff at the very beginning. But also, what it does, keeping going back in here, it helps you actually mix colors. So we're looking at oil paints right now, and this is what happens. If you mix this color and this color, you get this, and you can get various shades of it, and you go across the same way. So you're kind of creating a graphic chart on how to mix colors, and it does it with um, oils. Let's go back in here. Again, in acrylics, uh, we've got it in, where we go, watercolors. I know they've got colored pencils and stuff in here. Let's keep going here. Gouache. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with what gouache is, gouache is an opaque watercolor. Um, and when you mix it, it, it's very chalky, but it is still watercolor. It has almost no binders in it, so you get it wet, and it, it's like watercolor. It just rewets itself. Uh, let's see. Where are we going here? Soft pastels. Shows you how you're mixing soft pastels. And some of this is really cool because you can see they're layered over each other. They're not actually blended together. So, but it helps you get these wonderful shades and tones, um, colored pencils, and I think we even might have crayons in the backs here. Um, no, it doesn't have, but it also shows you mixing whites into things, mixing blacks into stuff in different mediums. This is a fantastic book. It's made, it's, it's, the author is Ian Sidaway. It's called the Color Mixing Bible. No, I don't get any money for this, but I have told everybody I've ever met, if you have issues with trying to figure out how to mix a color, you need this book. Because what happens is, if you want a certain brown, and what you start mixing colors, you don't know where to go. You, you A, either turn stuff gray, 
or B, it's the wrong shade of brown. You, you wanted a warm brown and you end up with a cool brown, meaning you wanted something that had a little orange in it, a little reddish tone to it, which is or yellow, which makes it warm, and you end up with cool green and blue tones to it. And this is one of the best books to help you without having to actually take a color theory book. Um, and if you find, this is a little bit of color theory I, I always try to share with people. If you find that you have created something that is too red, too yellow, too green, too orange, too something, whatever it is, if you've got something that's too orange, mix a little blue in it, cancels that out. If you find something that's a little too red, mix a little green into it, cancels that red out. If you find something that is a little yellow, too yellow for you, add a little purple to it. It cancels that out. That's what complementary colors do, is that they work to neutralize each other when you mix them together. It's really, really, really uh, a good understanding to have of colors. Um, I've taken so many color theory classes, and quite frankly, I've taught a couple. I find that instead of trying to explain the science of it and... There is a lot of science behind it, and I will not do it. Having this book, it just kind of shows you what you need to know. Like, if you're looking for the, okay, I'm working in acrylics, and these are the colors I have. Let's get into some acrylics here. Come on. Where are my acrylics? Here we go. If I want this color here, this chart tells me where to go. It tells me that I want to start with cadmium yellow light. And to get that brown, I need to add Venetian red, which is sort of a muddy brown. And it gets me in here and gets me brownish without it turning totally orange. But if I want something different, if I want it more umber, more browny and not so orangey, look, I've got cadmium yellow here, and I'm going to mix with one of the either the burnt umber or the raw umber, and I'm going to get different colors. So this is super, super helpful. If you're struggling with colors, I highly, highly, highly recommend getting this book. You can order it on Amazon or off of barnesandnobles.com. Um, when I bought it many, many years ago, I think it was like, oh, here it is, it was $24.95. This is really a great book to have. So and I'm sure it's not that much more expensive now. Um, books, unlike other things, don't have huge inflation issues. So let me check here, see if I've got any questions. Um, hi, Maddie and Janet and Cheryl and Alice. Oh, Connie, all of you guys are awesome. Alice... Thank, you're welcome, Maddie and Alice, for the color information. Listen, color mixing comes very intuitively to some people. It does not come intuitively to others. I had a little... I, I My friend Martin Allen Hirsch um, from Faux Effects, he is an instinctive color mixer. He can get a color in his head and grab colorants and damn near get it perfect every time. Me, I'm close to that, but sometimes I need a little extra help, and that book is, you know, completely bailed me out of stuff sometimes. All right, now that we've talked, talked, and talked, color theory, we're going to work on our chandelier. Now, I've been working on this already today. You can see up close here that I have been placing some dots on these. Why? Because they're going to, we're going to build layers of color with this. The last thing we're going to do is put foil, uh, put gold leaf size and we'll gild these, but we're going to finish working on the arms. So we're going to work on these for a while today. Um, I'm going to play with the camera angle so that you can actually see what I'm doing and that, so I can see it too. So be patient with me while I play around with this. I for so I'm going to be very apologetic right now if uh, it makes you a little queasy when I start moving things around. That just sort of happens. All right, so we're going to move the camera angle. You're going to see a lot of strange stuff. So I am going to try here 
to get this down so it's where you can see it and then I have to watch my own cameras here to see if I got the right spot and I think I'm pretty close so we should be able to see it okay let me open this screen up and do that I'm gonna do it this way all right the angles a little awkward because <laughs> Why would it be easy? <laughs> okay, and I'm going to be reaching across from time to time just so that I can see um, what your questions are. So many times you'll see me working on stuff with regular paint brushes, but I bought a couple years um, a mandala kit for painting on rocks, and it came with all of these uh, styluses in different sizes and shapes and then it came with these little glass or plastic tubes so that you could make perfectly circular dots. Now I practiced before I did this on my piece because I thought this tube was going to be the great solution and then I realized that these are all twisted and that twisting gives a little bit of a concave spot and that wasn't going to work so well. So I've kind of done the front top part of this, and now I'm going to start working on the bottom. I have plenty more to work on on here, but we're going to play with this right now. Um, and we're going to get this going. So what I am choosing to do is the color from here on one arm is going to be the color of the dots on the next arm. So this arm is purple. This green arm will have purple dots on it. This arm is green. This Florentine gold arm will have green dots on it, and so on and so forth. It made my color placement a little easier just to do it that way. Now what I do, because it's not going to be that easy for you all to see, I dip my little dabber here, my little stylus, and let me get in here, and I'm going to, that is not enough paint. I dip the stylus in, and I dab it on and it gives me a circle. Why am I using this thing as opposed to a paintbrush? Because um, paintbrushes, especially on an awkward angle, are more likely to give me an oval than a circle. Now mind you, this is gonna be hung in a tree, so you're not gonna see every little spot as carefully as I'm applying it, but it's a great teaching moment to share. I don't think you can see the top. I think all you're going to see is the top of my hand right here, which is not easy. As a lefty, I'm also working with an odd handicap here. So let me get here. And if I have spots that I missed from before, which is very likely, because I can see a couple that I missed last night. I own it. I got tired. I got... I was ready to go home. Um, I'll just touch it up. And then I'm going to try to get as far up into what we would lovingly call the crotch of this thing with the dabber, but I'm going to wait until I'm not doing that on camera so I can turn it straight to me and uh, get a, a better angle on it. All right, I got all of that. Let's get a little dot up here. All right. And because this is this thing is stainless steel, all I'm doing is wiping the extra paint off on my apron, or if I had a rag sitting next to me, I'd use that. So we're going to turn this one now. We're going to go this way. So now we have... Let's make sure I'm watching the camera here. Um... I want to make sure you all can see what I'm doing. Yeah, this is this is the purple one. So the purple one had the Florentine gold. Where is my big jar of Florentine gold? Let me check any mess comments here. Hey, Aaron and Mary, nice to see you here. Thank you for coming in. And if you see somebody wandering around behind me, that's our friend Miguel, who is helping with our social media. He's up in my game so that... You know, I'm in the 21st century instead of being the dinosaur that I am. All right, so let me come in here. 
This might be a little out of focus. I don't know how just how close up I'm being on your... You're getting a nice view of my knuckles sometimes, I know that. Which I'm trying not to do, but that's still not, you know, it happens. All right, so now we can roll it back a little. Now, I love doing this kind of stuff. I know some people can't stand it. They call it fiddly work or fuss work. I find it really, really, really meditative. Very, very relaxing. And there are some spots that I skipped last night. I really was ready to go home. Ah, no worries. I'll fix it. Leave this for tomorrow. Okay. See you tomorrow. No problem. Thanks, Miguel. Miguel is heading home for the day. He's tired of listening to me talk to. <laughs> Miguel, he's already dealt with like no heat in the studio. He's already dealt with like the ceiling falling in from the water damage from the roof. I feel that poor boy, this poor boy. You know, I, it's like I live to make his life harder. All right, let's close this up. And then this one, since this arm next to it here is the Victorian gold. All the dots that I place on here are going to be in Victorian gold. And the other thing you should notice is some of these are twisted a lot tighter. Like this one is a really tightly twisted piece of metal. This one is pretty loose. So that means this one's going to have more dots. This one's going to have less. If that makes you crazy, then go in and place more dots on here. For me, it doesn't make me crazy. I just want to do this once and do it once right which means I probably need to do it three times. <laughs> All right. All right, well, let's see where my hand is on the camera. And I'm gonna angle this, I think, a little bit because it'll get a better shot at this for you to see what I'm doing. If I do it this way, and I know you're getting the top of my hand at the moment, I'm sorry. I cannot quite get a Angle. Maybe we should lift this up a little bit. Give me just a second. Whoa! I want to lift it up, not throw it down. Let's see if that gives us a little better angle for you to see. And then we'll tilt that forward for you. There we go. I think you'll be able to see a little better. I'm sorry you're still going to end up seeing my hand a lot, but... Let me see if I can get in here and you can see the dots that I'm laying and not just my hand. And this is a little bit of a challenge because you're always trying to find that one spot that's always consistently facing in one direction. And when it's really twisted like this, that can be harder. Okay. I got this little stylus thing on Amazon. I think I paid like 12 bucks for the kit. It came with a bunch of these kinds of stylus. It came with some pla more of the plastic pipes. It came with um, some cheapo brushes. And the whole idea was that you're going to paint rocks. And you know what? I know lots of people who love doing that. I'm not one of them. Um, because I always have some other stuff going on that I need to be painting, and so I don't get to sit down and do something cute like a little rock. All right, let's tilt this back a little bit there. Again, we're using Roberson's Liquid Metal. Uh, yesterday, I had could not remember if this product is exterior rated, and it is indeed. Uh, I went and checked for you. So yes, this is an interior and exterior product. By the way, it actually comes in jars so big you can paint this on your walls. I mean, imagine your walls, some of these gorgeous metallic colors. So that's one of the things I love about it. 
Um, but it does recommend that if it's going to stay consistently, because it says on the websites that in general this does not need to be top coated because you're not worrying about tarnishing. However, if it's going to be outside consistently, you, they do recommend an exterior grade top coat on it. So we can use, uh, since we're going to have to seal up the candle cones here and here, after I gild them with Whitson's leaf lacquer, we can coat the whole thing with leaf lacquer, or we could move on to another product like um, C Fofex C500 or AquaGuard Gloss or something along those lines. So you're not um, going to be stuck worrying about whether or not the products will hold up outside. The colors are exterior rated. The products are exterior rated. All right, let's move this way. Okay, let me see what I... I got to watch the camera so I can see what you all see. And maybe I want to move it a little closer. Okay, let me see if I've got any questions. Hi, Andrea and Erin. Thank you for popping in. All right, so the next color we're going to be using is the Blue Pearl. Our Roberson's Blue Pearl, because that's what's on this branch. So it will be going on here over the Victorian Gold. And again, I just need to make sure I wipe the other color off because, you know, I'm so elegant. I, have to, I don't have a rag sitting next to me. So let me wipe it on my hands or wipe it on my apron. This is why I go through aprons, too, just so everybody's sure. It's not because I can't get paint on the surface. It's because I'm too lazy to go find a rag. All right, let's try this way. Now, I know this is going to be a little blurry from some of the angles. I, I apologize. This is really a tough thing without somebody else running a camera to get an angle of what I'm doing. Like I need somebody with a camera pack going in and zooming in so I can just paint and not worry about it. <laughs> but I don't want to leave you all hanging. This is going to look so cute in my garden. Oh my gosh. I'm in love. I'm picking colors that will be flattering in nature, even though they're metallic. And also that it doesn't become... Um, a pink fest outside where my husband loves me in my in pink he let my son loves me in pink but they don't want to be in you know like a pink room that's not for them so I do take them into consideration when I'm doing these kind of things even if whoops I've rolled myself out of camera frame um, even if I'm doing this for me you know they have to live with it too I try to respect that not always, but I try once in a while. All right, there we go on that one. All righty. So now we are on the pearl, uh, the blue pearl arm here. Again, move it a little closer. I know this is a really awkward angle, and I, I don't know how to fix it for you because I cannot get the camera up any higher. Um, I might be able to do another another angle. Are you all seeing what I'm doing? Is it all right? If it's not, tell me so I can move things around. Hey, Jill, nice to see you here. All right, so that is that color is the um, oh, I did the wrong gold on there. I'll fix that. I was meant to use the Florentine gold here and then the true gold here, but I'll fix it later. I'll just go right over it. So we're back into Florentine gold because that was supposed to be on this. Okay, see, I even I, the genius that I am, makes mistakes. And I know you don't think I'm taking myself ser seriously when I say things that way. If I make a mistake, you might as well see it. If 
my making a mistake helps you prevent yourself from making one, pre helps prevent you from making one. I, I, my grammar has also gone out the window today. Um, I'm all about it. Let's go here. I mean, it's really, you know, kind of not a big deal to me if I if I goof up a little bit, especially on something that's for me, because <laughs> the only person who's going to notice I didn't do it right is me. So once I know this is dry, I'll come back in and fix those spots that I painted with this gold with the correct gold that I meant to put on there. I'll just layer it over it. Gold on gold. Oh, no. I'm really liking this though. It's so cute and it's so fun. This is going to look so much fun in my in my garden. Oh, yay. And I still have more to do up here on this part because I was we were taking pictures of me doing stuff, so I got a little distracted getting it in the way I wanted to. <laughs> Shocker. I got distracted by something. And I can see a couple more of these spots in here that I couldn't see before because I was not at the right angle. There we go. Ooh, I need to fix that. I kind of smeared the paint on that spot. All right. While I'm at this angle where I can see to correct things, I might as well do it. This is, what color is this called? This is called classic gold. Now, not all the colors that we're working with today are available on our website. Most of them are. However, I place orders for things regularly. So if you've decided that you want a color that is on the Roberson's color charts that we don't have in stock, let me know. When I place my next order, I'll bring it in. I, you can even pre-order it. Okay, that looks good there. And just fix that gold and I'll fix it on the, the rest of it. All right, and then on the, on the um, Florentine gold, we need to use the light green. Let me get this. I gotta be careful how I grab stuff because there is enough wet paint now. I could make a big mess if I'm not careful. All right, and I just wanna make sure that what I'm doing is in the camera angle so you all can see me. Right, so we've got the bright gold. Now I'm going to start at the top, which I know you're not going to be able to see. You're just going to see the top of my hand. But it won't take me but a second or two to get down lower. And then I'll show you without going too deep into it what we're going to do next. Now, because these were square pieces twisted, there's actually more places for me to put dots on here if I want to. Um, I'm not going to do that because I really don't want to lose my mind. And I don't need this to look completely like it has beautiful metallic measles. I just want to have it on the top and on the bottom as extra detail that's going to catch light and be so pretty. Now, again, I'm getting into a place where it's going to be really hard for me to make sure I'm getting the placement right without it my, me turning it towards myself. Uh, so I'm going to 
put a little pause on that one and then I'm going to go in here and get the rest of that um, Victorian green in now that I can see that angle. Now this is an older jar. It was kind of half filled when I got it. It was a sample I got from one of my vendors. Um, so this one goes on just a little thicker, you know, a little more dabbed on. So I might get a little more texture out of it. It might go a little more 3D instead of tightening right down to the surface like the the newer jars do because they're um, more liquid. You can add water to this paint too if it gets a little too thick for you. You just don't want to add so much that you compromise the integrity of the product. Okay, so I've done that and then I'm going to flip this around and we're going to, I'm going to show you what the next step will be even though I haven't completed the first step on everything. So let's turn this uh, this way so that you can see. So you see we have again these green dots here on top of the Florentine gold. So I went from this color next to it. So guess what we're doing? We're going to take this... You know, I just realized this looks like Mardi Gras. I must have New Orleans on my mind. <laughs> I just realized the colors are like totally Mardi Gras colors. How did I not notice that before? But that's okay, because New Orleans is a place I love. All right, so we took this green and put it on here. We're also then, we're going to go one over this way and take the purple that's next to the green and dot it in because these are double sided so we were using the large one here we're going to take the smaller one and dot on the dot now I think you should be able to see that if you can't let me zoom in a little bit give me just a second for you to get a better close-up of that I think you should be able to see it right there like that. Okay, yes, there we go. So I'm going to take this purple, dot it nicely right on top of the green. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. And there's Mardi Gras in three colors right there. <laughs> So this is truly where we're going with this. And I know you're seeing this part kind of flagging around. I'm sorry. It's, the, it's, it's what we got for you to be able to see what I'm doing. All right. So I'm going to turn the camera around. We're going to put this down for a little bit. I'm going to finish this a little while off camera. Get all those dots done so that you won't have to watch me do it more than once move that. Let's move my camera. Open our picture up wide again. All right, and you can zoom into all of my messiness as I swing the camera around. And then I hope you can see me. I think you can see me now. Let me check. Yep. All right, everybody, I appreciate you popping in today. This was an awesome live to do with you. Again, color theory. It's get yourself a color wheel or print one off, but go, Michaels has tons of them, so that will tell you what these colors are. Ignore, for me, this was some, I just printed this off because I have a million color wheels, and you'd be amazed I can't find any of them. Ignore whatever this print is. This is just focusing on the colors. And again... Ian Sidaway's Color Mixing Bible, one of the most helpful books I have ever had to be able to mix colors accurately. Once you get used to the idea of how you're doing it, it will be very natural. But if you're really struggling with it, this is a terrific guide. It's a great aid. I highly recommend it. I have brought it to almost every class I've ever taught. I probably sold more of them on Amazon than Amazon ever knew was going to sell. <laughs> but really, this is a great book. So I recommend, highly, highly, highly recommend it. 
Um, when I can't find it, I get panicky, even though I don't necessarily need it. I need to have it near me. It's like, for me, it's a security blanket. Um, let me check here, see if there was any questions that I missed. Hey, Sandy. And we got two Sandys who popped in. And Jill, I appreciate all of you coming in. Again, if you have any questions, post them in the comments. I'll come back and answer them for you. I hope you are all having a fantastic day. And I will see you later. I'm going to go put, paint some more dots. Have a good one, everybody. Bye-bye. Oh, it doesn't want to let me hang up.